Okay, good afternoon, everyone. I'd like to call the October 5th, 2020 regular council meeting to order and begin by acknowledging that the land on which we are gathered is the traditional unceded territory of the Kitsi, Kwantlen, Maskwee, and Samiamu First Nations. I'm Mayor Val Vandenbroek, and with me today I have Councillor Rudy Stortaboom, Councillor Rosemary Wallace, Councillor Gail Martin, Councillor Terry James, and Councillor Nathan Bahal, Councillor Paul Albrecht, and for city staff, we have Darren Lane, our Director of Corporate Services, Kelly Kenny, our Corporate Officer, Francis Chung, our Chief Administrative Officer, Carl Johansson, our Director of Development Services, Rick Baumhoff, our Director of Engineering, Parks and Environment, and Kim Hilton, our Director of Recreation, Culture and Community Services, so thank you everyone for being here today. We're going to start with the adoption of the agenda, adoption of the October 5th, 2020 regular agenda, that the October 5th, 2020 agenda be adopted as circulated, any changes or additions to the agenda. Okay, I need a mover and a seconder then, please. Councillor Sturdeboom, Councillor Wallace, all those in favor, that carries. Regular meeting minutes from September 28th, 2020 that the minutes of the regular meeting held on September 28, 2020 be adopted as circulated. Any corrections to that? I'm gonna move her, Councillor Sturdeboom, seconder on that, please. Councillor Wallace, all those in favor? Any opposed, that carries. Mayor's report, uh, our upcoming meetings next, regular council meeting next one will be October 19th, 2020. That'll be th at 3 p.m. remotely. The following one after that, the regular council meeting will be November 2nd, 2020 at 3 p.m. remotely as well. And moving on, library happenings with Councillor Martin. Just give me a, a minute, I have to pull up my notes, please. <clears throat> No worries. Okay, so the library happenings. Um, Fraser Valley Regional Library's newest playground lending experience, Sparrow Spectrums, launches October the 5th. Maybe the slide could change. Who's working the slides? Uh, that would be Kim Hilton, Madam Mayor. Are you not seeing the updated slide? Uh, I only see the first slide. Have you got the second slide up? The math yeah, yep. it's, all, it's only showing the first slide, Kim. We tested this too, to make sure it would work. Welcome to Zoom. You seeing it now? I think it's showing your screen as opposed to the screen that's showing the slide deck. So we can see the main screen with PowerPoint application. Okay, we're trying it this way. If you like, Madam Mayor, I could bring it up on my screen, see if that works. It's showing now. Yes, it's working. Councillor Martin, you're on mute. We're still on the second slide, Kim, so if you can go back one. Thank you. So spectrums are app-enabled musical rings that make the world your instrument by turning colors into sound. Tap the rings on anything to create and mix sounds, beats, and loops that all play through your mobile device. Next. <clears throat> 
can have fun finding numbers and shapes with your friends and family. Contest runs until October the 9th. Be sure to check out our series of virtual math cafe programs for more fun with numbers. Fraser Valley Regional Library is pleased to offer a selection of free virtual cultural day events for 2020. And Fraser Valley Regional Library Summer Reading Club podcast episodes on Read Radio were so popular that we decided to launch Kids Read Radio for younger listeners at the end of September. Listeners will get great reading recommendations and learn about the cool stuff their library has to offer. <clears throat> All month long, libraries across Canada are raising awareness of the valuable role libraries play in Canadians' lives. More than just a place to find books, libraries promote cultural awareness, engage in community, provide educational programs, support freedom and expressions so much. So you can enter uh, to win um, a Galaxy tablet, a tablet. And last but not least, Fraser Valley Region Library celebrates Library Month in October. This book list features books for all ages set in libraries of or starting librarians. And that's it. Thank you very much. Great. Thank you so much for that. Anybody have any questions or comments for Councillor Martin on the library happenings? Seeing none, thank you very much. Moving on, we have an engineering update with Rip Baumhofer, Director of Engineering Parks and Environment. All right, thank you very much. I'll just go to share my screen. Can you see that? Yes. Okay. All right, update for engineering parks and environment for October 2020. Now I can get it to switch. <laughs> We're having our difficulties today. Let me see. No. Can you just use your down arrow oh, on yeah. the keyboard? Okay, here we go. All right, so the, uh, this is a shot of the Langley bypass culverts at Logan Creek. So it's a completed um, culvert section. As you can see, the water is back in the pipe. And uh, this is on the east side of the culvert. And this is on the west side, uh, showing uh, new fencing and inlet structure. Similar configuration, of course, on the, as on the east side. And uh, it also has a driveway <coughs> let down so that crews can get in and do maintenance work when required. This is a shot of uh, 203 Street uh, median work uh, between Fraser Highway and uh, Douglas Crescent. Uh, the median will be replaced. It was in very poor condition and um, it'll be a complete median right through except for the left turns at the two intersections, one at Fraser Highway and one at Douglas. The intermediate uh, driveway axis uh, will be removed. This is a shot of a uh, new traffic controller and generally uh, we're, we're making updates to all of those uh, traffic controllers that are signals. In the past, you may recall that we, uh, we did one intersection each year and with a full retrofit of the complete signal, but we found that it was just taking too long to complete all of the upgrades and a lot of the controllers were becoming out of date and we, we just couldn't get replacement parts anymore. So we've changed the program to, to focus on just replacing the controllers and the cabinets and the main componentry to, to bring the signal up to date. So this is one of those uh, locations. And we also uh, have a shot of the new fall banners that have been installed. And this is a picture of uh, some of the signal upgrades at various locations throughout the city. This one's at uh, 53rd and 200th. And the, in the Bryden Park, uh, it's been uh, on the focus a number of months now and it's very near completion. 
This is a crew, a contractor doing finishing touches on the trail work. We're hoping that it will be open to the public uh, later this week, possibly early next week. And then we'll be planning uh, for a, a grand opening or a ribbon cutting of some sort uh, with council in the near future. There are still a couple of items that are left on this project. Um, one is the covered structure within the dog park area that uh, unfortunately was left too late and um, it, so it's on order now. It's going to take three or four months to get. So that will not be completed on probably, until probably the new year. And also some of the, uh, a, a gate structure for uh, crews and for maintenance purposes that uh, still needs to be completed. But most, for the most part, this, this project is complete, so we will be able to open it soon. This is a sneak peek at uh, some additional Christmas lights at Innes Corners Plaza uh, for this Christmas. This was just installed this past weekend. Um, this is the beginning, of course, as you know, that's uh, a lot more effort has been put into decorating Innes Corners. So this is one additional component of that uh, of that plaza and it's uh it'll be a nice significant improvement so all of the oak trees along glover uh, will be lit up in addition there will be lights on the trunks of each of the trees so it'll, it'll uh, make it pop even more some other uh, upcoming current and upcoming project work that we're undertaking is uh, bridge maintenance contract is out for tender uh, involves the replacement of the bridge seals along on 51b causeway so along 53 51b uh, road uh, and also we'll be replacing the wood planks and recoding the two white pedestrian bridges at 208th street at the Mecca Mecca Crossing, as well as the bridge just south of Portage Park. And this, uh, this is a project we're doing inflow and infiltration investigation work. Um, we've been finding that uh, a lot of, uh, we seem to be getting a lot of in, inflow and infiltration in this catchment. So it's in the area of the bypass 56th area. Um, and we notice that the pump stations are running very busy, uh, heavy uh, in, during rainfall events, which of course it's a sanitary and it should not be affected that dramatically by rainfall. So um, we are doing some additional video inspection and this project is for uh, smoke testing. So there'll be, uh, what they do is they inject basically a smoke bomb in the pipe and they, there's crews out there monitoring where is the smoke coming out. So and hopefully they'll find some cross connections where a storm is connected to the sanitary and we can fix those. We have already found some uh, through our video inspection where there's been some cross connections and one where uh, you know, there's a sanitary connected to the storm sewer, which is of course not a good thing either. So that's been fixed. We we're able to fix the one that we found anyways. Uh, this project is the relining of the 40, of a, of sewer storm main along 47th Avenue, just to the north of 47th. It's out for tender and we'll be relining about 200 meters of 450 millimeter storm sewer to prevent uh, root infiltration as well as uh, um, just infiltration from around the pipe. And thank you very much. That's my report. Great. Thank you, Mr. Baumhoff and all your staff. There's some fantastic work going on there. So thank you. Uh, any comments or questions for Mr. Baumhoff? Councillor James and then Councillor Stortaboom. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Uh, Mr. Baumhoff, I just wanted to say that I um, saw those lights going up at Innes Corners and that is quite the process. They were there for literally all day um, from first thing in the morning till like late seven eight o'clock at night so it's pretty impressive to watch and what I most appreciated was the safety measures they had in place because they are dealing really close to the roads and they had you know people making sure that nobody was coming near getting distracted it was just it was impressive to see so I'm excited to see what the whole community looks like this Christmas. Mm. Good thanks thank you. 
Councillor Sturdivant. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, Mr. Baumhoff, for your uh, report. Uh, I, too, uh, look forward to seeing the Christmas lights, and uh, uh, I think that we'll all be encouraged in seeing them, and we could all use a little bit of a pick-me-up. And uh, on that note, uh, I have a couple of questions, but I do want to thank you and your team for helping to clear up some of the laneways in town, and uh, doing some of that cleanup, I think, has made it that much more attractive for uh, citizens to uh, go for our daily walks. So thank you for that. Uh, first question is with regard to the uh, two of Third Street uh, median upgrade. Uh, am I correct in my understanding uh, that uh, the left uh, turning bay is uh, to be eliminated there or is it to be preserved? The left turning bay into the plaza yes. will be eliminated. I understand. Um, have you had any discussion or uh, with any of the merchants uh, about that? And uh, have we've had uh, discussions with the owner of the plaza. Yes. And uh, there is a, a very, oh, sorry. Go ahead. Okay, sorry, I seem to be, uh, I'm missing. <laughs> I'm not sure if, I, if you're hearing me well, but uh, I've got some web, some whatever is confusion on, on my side here. So sorry. yeah, uh, I'm not sure if you're hearing me properly. I am. But in, in the uh, left turn bay, so there is an entrance off of Fraser Highway into that plaza, and people can make the turn at the signalized intersection, of course, at Fraser and 203, as well as anyone traveling uh, northbound on 203 can enter it and exit uh, right in, right out through that same uh, entrance. So for the most part, uh, the entrances and exits will still be accessible to that location. So the owner was fine with the proposed improvements that we're making. Thank you. I appreciate the efficiency of it. Thank you very much for consulting with the owner of that plaza because they're going to be impacted to a certain degree. Uh, also, I did have a question with regard to that last item in your report concerning the stu storm sewer upgrade. I think it was on 47. So those are running along the back boundaries of those properties that are uh, impacted. Um, I presume then that those uh, residents have all been notified that this storm sewer upgrade is taking place, that it is for the mutual benefit of the community, uh, but it may affect some of their properties, fencing, vegetation, that sort of thing. Um, thank you for that question. I, the um, it's a relining project, so there won't be any excavation in the back. Um, it'll be a, a pretty much in situ, so in place. Uh, they'll be removing the roots remotely through remote, remote control devices and then cleaning out the pipe and relining it. But yes, there will be some minor disturbances to the residents and they will all be notified and they're all fully aware of the project because there have been some drainage issues uh, affecting some of them. So um, we have been in communication with them as well along the way. Thank you very much for your excellent report. Uh, many thanks to your team for their hard work. Thank you, Madam Mayor. That is uh, it for me. Great, thank you very much. Any other questions or comments for Mr. Baumhoff? I've had my hand raised for about 10 minutes. I don't know if you see it or not. I apologize. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Martin, and then Councillor Bahal, and then Albrecht. Thank you. Yeah, I was going to ask about the uh, 203rd uh, medium going into the plaza too, but that was a good explanation. Thank you very much, Rick. Uh, in regards to the tree lights uh, in McBurney Lane, has there been any thought about keeping them on throughout the year? There's been discussion about we could put them on at different times, depending on what potential events are and of, of that nature. Um, of course, it's it's also possible to leave them on 100%. Uh, so it's, uh, I mean, if that's something that council would want to see, uh, that kind of a thing. In, in the past, we've always waited until after Remembrance Day to, to start to turn on uh, Christmas lights. So it's, uh, that's kind of the direction that we've been taking to this point. 
Okay, I, I just recall that when we first started putting lights on the trees, when we had trees on Fraser Highway, the one way, um, we did ask to, to keep them on. It just sort of brightens up the downtown. So um, it might be something we want to look at perhaps after Christmas and, and see just right. to keep, just keep the brightness in the downtown uh, yeah, core. Extending, extending the season a little bit, sure. Yeah, yeah, thank you. Great. Uh, go ahead, Councillor Paul, and then... Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor. And to Councillor Martin's point, I know that sometimes uh, municipalities would extend it into like February or something like that. And when it's the darkest months, that might be something to explore um, and be something I'd be interested in exploring. But uh, just a question for you, Mr. Baumhoff, through the Mayor. Uh, what is the trade-off between doing a full traffic signal replacement and just replacing the controller? The, the trade-off is cost, in, in essence. It costs about 275000 per signal to, to retrofit the whole thing versus uh, retrofitting the controller is somewhere in the range, depending on what the each inter, inter, intersection is a little bit different, unique, depending on what the needs are, but it's somewhere between fifty and 60000 Thank you. And just a follow-up question. What would trigger, since we can do these retrofits, going from the just the control the, the controller to needing to do the full intersection? That would be if the poles were showing signs of excessive wear, um, if the lines within the ducts were were not free and clear. So if you're we we go out and test them and make sure that the lines can still be moved. Um, if there's any kind of, you know, a situation where you can't remove the line or, or uh, repair it in that way, then we would be looking at replacing ducts. And as you saw in one of the project pictures, it, it actually showed a cut right across 200th Street where we did have to replace the ducts. But um, it would involve, it, we, we just tried to do a little bit more inspection work and rather than just replacing it all because of age, you know, we're looking at the actual condition and assessing it and doing a little more thorough review before doing any uh, replacement work. That sounds great. So it seems like we found an opportunity to find uh, some cost savings uh, if possible, instead of just doing it whole hog, we're now being a little bit more thorough before we do a full replacement. Yes, correct. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Baumhoff. Great, right. thank you. Councillor Albrecht. Yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor, and, and uh, um, thanks, Mr. Baumhoff, for the report. I, I too, appreciate the, the lights and, and the opportunity to have uh, a little more, um, let's say, lit up downtown uh, in, a, in a longer window of opportunity, so that's great. Um, the signal controller upgrades, um, I think, are long overdue, and, and this is a, a good way of going about it. Uh, I'm just wondering, uh, will this uh, allow us to do a little more coordination with uh, with the township and, and highways and that sort of thing? Um, you know, um, the advanced technology and those controller upgrades can help us uh, do a little bit more coordination. And uh, the final thing that I had was, uh, I think, the infiltration tests are really important to reduce uh, the stress on the uh, the sanitary treatment facilities downstream. I think this is something that uh, will probably save us some money and the community some money by uh, reducing that loading on the downstream sanitary systems and the burden on the metro system because that's where it all ends up anyway. So uh, I don't know if you have any comments on any of those points that I've got. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Bumhoff. Uh, yes, thank you. We, we have been working with Metro um, in terms of identifying where the worst uh, areas are in the, within the city. Uh, we, we actually do quite well, uh, except for a couple of small pockets. So um, we're focusing on those areas and, and working in coordination with Metro for sure. And um, on the Christmas lights, uh, each year we do try to to make more improvements and, and uh, brighten, brighten it up. And of course, as uh, we're all aware, with the trees being removed on, on Fraser Highway in the downtown area, we are gonna be brightening up 
and we're putting in additional Christmas lights uh, on, on the poles this year. So it will uh, be a lot brighter and a little more festive looking as well. So um, trying to make it uh, similar. I don't know if you know, you've seen probably the ones at Douglas Park, the nice, um, you know, very more modern kind of looking um, displays. We'll be doing similar like that on, on Fraser Highway this year. So you'll, see, you'll notice that as well. Okay, great. Was that the only question, Council Albert? Was that? Okay, great, thank you. I just wanna make sure before I move on. Yeah, I think the Christmas lights are great. I mean, it's a great opportunity to keep it on for Orthodox Christmas and even Chinese New Year's into February, right? So celebrate all the different cultures we have, not just Christmas in our community. So thank you. Any other comments or suggestions? I don't see any. Perfect, we will move on. Thank you, Mr. Baumhoff. Okay, on to bylaws. Bylaw 3137, chauffeur permit and regulation bylaw repeal bylaw, final reading of a bylaw to repeal the chauffeur permit and regular um, bylaw, regulation bylaw. Motion is that this bylaw cited as chauffeur permit and regulation bylaw 2016, number 3002, repeal bylaw number 3137, be read a final time. Any discussion? Councillor Sturdeboom? Councillor Martin? All those in favor? Any opposed? Oh, I had a question. Sorry. Okay. Uh, so I, I can assume by this that we don't have to um, look at any complaints about chauffeur licenses anymore, or that we don't have to have a jury trial for these drivers? Uh, through the chair to Councillor Martin, that is correct. Thank you. Great, thank you. Anyone else? Councillor Albrecht, is your hand still up from the last time? Great, thank you. Okay, and call the vote again. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Bylaw 3138, Municipal Ticket Information System Bylaw. Final reading of bylaw to amend fees in the Municipal Ticket Information System that the bylaw cited as Municipal Ticket Information System Bylaw 2846, Amendment Number 15, 2020. Number 3138, be read a final time. Any discussion on that? Seeing none. Sorry, mover and seconder, Madam Mayor. Yep, getting to that right now, oh, Kelly. Sorry. No, that's okay. <laughs> I need a mover and a seconder, please. Councillor James, Councillor Storterboom, any further discussion on that? Seeing none, I'll call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. Up next, we have administrative reports. Carrie Simpson, President of Culture Guard, complaint to BC Human Rights Tribunal, the legal costs. And I believe, Francis, you have a presentation for us. Thank you, Madam Mayor. I just have a brief uh, uh, presentation to Council, a verbal presentation. Um, this was a request made by Council with respect to how much legal costs we incur as a result of our defense against Ms. Carrie Simpson who made the complaint against the city through the BC Human Rights Tribunal um, with multiple grounds and areas of discrimination under the BC Human Rights Code. Uh, the whole process started back in July 2018 when we first learned that Ms. Simpson was uh, putting forward a, a complaint against the, against the city at the BC Human Rights Tribunal. And that process uh, didn't end until um, April 2020 where the ruling was uh, in favor of the city and the complaint was uh, with, withdrew. Oh, um, so the cost incurred was approximately $62,000. And we had to wait until now to report back to council because there was a 60 days period where Ms. Simpson could appeal to the Human Beast Human Rights Tribunal. And we waited for that period of time to lapse. And thus, hence, uh, we pointed to council on the actual legal costs incurred to defend the city against Ms. Simpson's claim. Thank you. Great, thank you, Mr. Chung. Any questions, Councillor Martin? Yeah, I don't really have a question. I, I just have a comment. Um, 
I question why it would take two years to, to have, have it withdrawn uh, at a cost of $62,000. Uh, to me, this is a, a frivolous lawsuit costing our taxpayers $62,000. So is there a reason why it took two years to, to withdraw this? Your Worship, through Councilor Martin. Uh, initially, there was a claim against the city plus a couple other individuals. Uh, members of council and the human rights tribunal uh, we heard that complaints and made a ruling that only the city was going to be in defense against the claims the human rights Tri tribunal threw out uh, the complaints against those individuals a couple of members of council and then there was a then a process to do the investigation and it went back and forth between the city and Ms. Simpson in terms of uh, the evidence obtain evaluation and then uh, we made applications to the human rights tribunal to essentially uh, dismiss the claim the complaint and that took a little bit of time there was a lot of uh, evidence collected and you know put forward to the human rights tribunal and the timing in turn with the tribunal's uh, hearing schedule took a while too so it, it, it started with obviously reviewing the policy of a rainbow uh, about flag policy to the, the complaints by Ms. Simpson. And uh, that's why it took a couple of years time to resolve this. So half the human rights tribunal dismissed the complaint by Ms. Simpson. Thank you. Um, you know, I, I guess in regards to, to when they sit, our legal bills are still racking up to the tune of $62,000. And I think I probably asked this question prior, is there any way to recover any of this from Ms. Simpson, given that it's, to me, obviously a frivolous lawsuit if it's thrown out of court? Um, through the mayor to Council Martin, um, that avenue hasn't been put forward to us by our lawyer who has been dealing with uh, the Human Rights Tribunal. Uh, it's not a legal claim uh, through the Supreme Court of BC where the ju judge may be able to impose uh, some retribution in terms of um, monetary retribution back to the city. This is a different type of process. And I don't believe the Human Rights Tribunal can rule to have Ms. Simpson to pay for portion of the legal costs incurred by the city, as opposed to perhaps a judge at the Supreme Court of BC. Thank you, Mr. Chang. I, I guess the concern I have is that uh, she can just, anytime she wishes, put, put in a lawsuit if she's unhappy with what the city's doing or anybody else. and. Uh, to me, it's absolutely disgusting that we'd have to spend $62,000 on legal fees to, to defend something and then get it thrown out of court just because we didn't want to raise her flag or whatever the reason was. But thank you, Mr. Chung. Councilor Albrecht and then Councilor Sturdivant. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Madam Mayor, and thank you, uh, Mr. Chung, for the report. and. And I like um, Councillor Martin. I'm I'm pretty uh, unimpressed with uh, with this, and I'm I'm looking uh, to see if there's a way that we can uh, try to recover this uh, and at least uh, uh, a portion or all of it because this is this is outrageous and, and uh, you know someone suing on a whim is is not something that should be uh, taken lightly and and. Uh, there's better things that we could be doing, especially in these times uh, with uh, $62,000. So uh, uh, we've got uh, uh, a lot of groups in our community that are doing really good work uh, and they could certainly use uh, these kind of dollars to, uh, to try to provide a, a level of service to our community that is, that is needed and wanted. And uh, um, using these dollars for something like this is, is my counselor says frivolous and, and unnecessary and um, just yeah very very disappointing so uh, if there is some mechanism or some process where we could try to uh, recover some of these costs I would uh, I would be sure to be interested in us pursuing that so uh, thank you. Thank you Councilor Albrecht. Uh, Councilor Stratham you're next. Thank you Madam Mayor and thank you Mr. Chung for your report. So uh, $62,000 to the city. Are we aware of any costs that may have been uh, incurred by the complainant, uh, filing fees, whether a lawyer was involved on behalf of the complainant, 
any other costs that may have been incurred. What, what kind of cost has this been to the complainant to date that we may know of? Uh, through, the, through your worship to Councillor Stodun, uh, we are not aware of how much cost incurred by the complainant on this uh, case. Um, so I don't have that information. There's no filing fee or anything like that? No. But what I would do to answer uh, Councillor Martin's and uh, Councillor Albrecht's questions is that I would discuss it with our lawyers to see if there are any means uh, by way of uh, the city recovering a portion of all or all about the legal costs incurred by the city, and then we report back to council. Thank you, Mr. Chung. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Great, thank you. I'm sure um, by the looks of people on council, everybody's feeling the same way about trying to get the money back. I'm seeing a lot of head nods, so. Excellent, thank you, Mr. Chung. Any other comments? I need a mover and a seconder that the city council received a report of the chief administrative officer dated September 30th, 2020 for information. I have Councillor Bahal and Councillor Albrecht. Any further discussion on that before I call the vote? Okay, seeing none, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries, thank you. Okay, next motion up is that council policy CO dash seven three proclamations be approved. Need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Wallace, do you have a dis mover and a seconder? Councillor Wallace, Councillor Martin, any discussion on that? Councillor Sturbin? Yeah, I, I think that it's a good policy for the city uh, not to make proclamations. I think that uh, uh, we've learned uh, that uh, we could uh, get ourselves in trouble by supporting one side or another in a controversy that uh, may be uh, more personal than uh, um, corporate. So uh, I, I support the idea of uh, no longer making any proclamations moving forward. Thank you. Great, thank you. All right, any others? I don't see any hands and I don't see any hands. So call the vote, all those in favor? And opposed, and that carries. On to new and unfinished business. Uh, under A, motions and notices of motion. Deputy Mayor appointments 2020 to 21, that the 2020 2021 Deputy Mayor rotation be appointed as follows November 1st to December 31st, 2020, Councillor Paul. January 1st to February 28th, 2021, Councillor Albrecht. March 1st to April 30th, 2021, Councillor Martin. May 1st to June 30th, 2021, Councillor Wallace. July 1st to August 31st, 2021, Councillor Stortaboom. September 1st to October 31st, 2021, Councillor James. Need a mover and a seconder. Councillor Martin, Councillor James, any discussion on that? Councillor Stortaboom. Thank you, Madam Mayor. Just a quick question. Um, when acting as deputy mayor in the absence of the mayor being available, uh, does that make the deputy mayor the ex officio for committees as well? Please advise. I don't know if staff can clarify that. I think she's looking. Yeah, Matt, Madam Mayor? Yes. Um, yes, through the chair to Councillor Stortaboom. Um, the mayor is only an ex officio member of standing committees under council procedure bylaw. Thank you. That answer your question? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay, any other discussion or questions? Seeing none, call the vote. All those in favor? Any opposed? And we stick to that schedule. Okay, correspondence. We got some correspondence from Expanded Patio Permissions Liquor Control Regulation Board Extension re Received. So um, what is Council's wishes with this piece of correspondence just received for information? Councillor Martin. Yes, thank you. Um, I actually uh, spoke to Mr. Chung several weeks ago about um, the expansion 
And it's my understanding when we allowed this, we didn't put a date on, on it when it has to end. So I would assume that our restaurants could just continue with the uh, patio exp ex extensions without any word from council. Am I correct? Uh, through the mayor to council, Martin, yes, that is correct. We didn't place any time limit or, or dates on when this program will end. Essentially, this is part of our um, highway use permit regulations where currently, uh, even pre-COVID, that uh, restaurant owners could apply to the city through the highway use uh, permit regulations bylaw uh, to apply for the use of sidewalk. So this is our standard practice, and hence we didn't set any time limit for allow restaurants to uh, apply to use the sidewalk for that purpose. Thank you. Thank you. I, I just wonder, Mr. Chung, um, given that other municipalities sort of put, I, I think when I talked to you, I said um, the end of September or the end of October, I can't, can't quite remember, and we have no policy, and some restaurants, I think, did extend patios that did not have patios before, should we somehow make our restaurants aware that there, there is no time limit on, on their patio extensions in case they think they have to take it down? I, I don't know. Uh, your worship through Councillor Martin. Um, through the DLBA, we actually, they actually um, sent out the brochure and have that information on the link. Um, I, the brochure on guide to outdoor dining on sidewalks are attached to your agenda. And yeah. that was prepared uh, by our staff when we learn about this program uh, by the province. We just made it such that it's much more easier and much more user friendly and outlines all the steps and requirements for our restaurants to apply for a highway use permit to use the sidewalk for the for patio purposes. So, uh, so it's well advertised through the DLBA and uh, I believe all the restaurants and business owners are aware of this program. Okay. Yeah, I did. I did read the um, the guide to outdoor dining on sidewalks, um, and maybe just a suggestion to Councillor James that maybe in their next newsletter, just a brief mention about about it. I I don't know if it's even necessary, but just to make sure that they're they're all aware and make them feel comfortable. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else, Councillor James? You're on mute. You're still on mute. <laughs> Too many buttons. No, I figured it out. Too many buttons. Um, oh, thank good. you, Madam Mayor. Um, yeah, I'll just make a comment to Councillor Martin and then I have a question for Mr. Chung as well. So um, I'm under the um, belief that each of the restaurants that took advantage of this opportunity and created their patios, are they did it for the long haul. They're all very aware that the city didn't place limitations, but I can reinforce that for sure. And just a question for Mr. Chung. So because we didn't put a, a cap on a time or anything like that, um, is anybody, first of all, responding to this organization? Because they seem to be kind of inundating us with communication on this. Um, so maybe we should just connect with them and say, like, not only, not only did we waive the fees, but we, we, don't, we haven't capped it. So like, stop bugging us kind of thing, because they, they almost seem accusatory sometimes in their communication. And then secondly, um, so the no cap on the requirements, does that continue to include no fees as well? Who the, the mayor to Councillor James, uh, right now we're still in the COVID stage. And you know, from our staff perspective, uh, we will carry on until such time uh, we become the new normal. And then mm -hmm. we'll have a discussion with council in terms of uh, if and when we will reintroduce the, the, the fees again. Excellent, thank you. Okay, great. Let's see. Anyone else? There's no hands up. So I'll move on a second. I guess we're receiving as correspondence then. Yeah, I'm hearing, I'm seeing. Okay, and uh, mover, uh, Councillor Paul, I need a seconder on that too, please. Councillor Martin, all those in favor? Any opposed? And that carries. Okay, so a motion to go uh, hold a closed meeting that the council meeting immediately following this meeting be closed to the public as the subject matter being considered relates to items which comply with the following closed meeting criteria specified in section 90 of the community charter. 
One, a part of council meeting may be closed to the public if the subject matter being considered relates to or is one or more of the following. E, the acquisition, disposition, or expropriation of land or improvements if the council considers that disclosure could reasonably be expected to harm the interests of the municipality. We were in a seconder on that, please. Councillor Martin, Councillor Bahal, any discussion? See none. All those in favor? Any opposed? Carries. Uh, that motion that the meeting adjourn. All those in favor? Any opposed? That carries. So that is the end of our.